Oh, come on, let's bless the name of the Lord this morning. Come on, let's lift him up. He's worthy to be praised. This morning, we welcome you into these doors on this glorious Sunday morning. Let's magnify our great God. This choir is going to welcome you. We, as they do every week, We, if you know the song, you ought to join in with us. Words are, we welcome you to South Liberty. In the community. We thank every one of you for coming out this morning. Here we are rich in history, relevant in the community, and ready for eternity. This is the last time, if you know it, come on, lift your voice and sing it. We welcome where we are alive in the community. Thank you for coming this morning where we are rich, relevant. Again, where we are. Oh, bless him good in here. He's worthy to be praised. Do you see him? Do you see him? Do you see him? Do you feel his presence right there on your road? Something about when you enter into this place, you can feel the presence of our God. Won't you help us to focus on him? Won't you prepare your heart? your mind to focus on him as we lift his name crying holy 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 is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein congregation all together who is this king of glory the Lord of hosts he is the king of glory 
Brothers and sisters, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Won't you give him one more hand clap of praise? Our choir is coming to bless the name of the Lord this morning. The Lord is our liberty. The song says, God is my everything. Anybody know we have all what we need in the Lord? I don't know what you came to do on this rainy Sunday, but I can't. Come on, put your hands together. Come on. the 
motherless. He's been a father. I really want to know, is he your everything this morning? Oh, come on, somebody up in here. Is he everything? Is he the one that woke you up this morning? Is he the one that started you out on your way? Is he the only reason that your arms are waving right? Your eyes are blinking right? Your mind is thinking right? Is he the only reason that when you got in the car, you made it this to this place without running off the road and run? Do you give him credit and not yourself? That you are you come? I know it's in it's good good to be in good hands with all state, but is it he who gets the credit for really protecting you because he covered you under the blood of Jesus Christ? Is it he that has brought you to where you are in your life right now? Is he your everything? Is our everything? Our everything. Without him, we have nothing. Without him, we would fail. Without him, our life would fail be like a ship without a sail. Somebody, if you know that, you ought to shout, my everything. Yeah. Food on my table. Clothes on my back. Sanity in my mind. <sighs> my everything. Hallelujah. Our everything has given you and I everything we need to know to make it in this life. It's contained in the B-I-B-L-E acronym for basic instruction before leaving earth. And inside this beautiful work of inspired words from God's mouth to our ears, we turn to Ephesians chapter number six for our thought today. Ephesians chapter six. And we want to begin our reading at verse number 11, very familiar passage. Hear these words. Apostle Paul said, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the congregation. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, congregation. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all, uh, the congregation. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God altogether, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watching thereunto with all and for all saints. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy and divine word. 
Well, the text is our commandment right there at verse 18. Tells us to pray always. We need to be praying for all things. We need to be praying for all peoples. We need to be praying always. I don't know about you, but I have so much to pray for. Am I in the good company? Do you likewise have much that you can pray for? So much so, I got so much to pay f pray for, Jamaica, that if you can't think of any thing or body to pray for, will you please, please pray for me? I believe prayer works. I believe I made it over him, not because of me and anything I've done, but because of the prayers of some grandmamas and some great grandmamas and anybody else in the room this morning that can thank God that mama prayed for you? God answers prayer. God answers prayer. I, 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 I really want to know this morning, just by a show of hand, how many or your mothers like mine, grandmothers like mine, didn't pray that you got a whole lot of money. They didn't pray that you had a successful career. That wasn't the, the focus of their prayers. They didn't pray that you got everything you ever wanted. But they prayed that you would serve the Lord. Look at you now, look at you now, look at you now. Their prayers being answered. Because you're serving the Lord. And I'm a living witness that serving the Lord, it'll pay off. It'll pay off. Talking about after a while, it's paying off right now. Right now. Right now. Won't you lift prayers with me this morning? We pray not only, we certainly lift up Reverend Stewart. Come on, help me lift him today. We're asking that God would have his way. We're lifting, we're lifting, we're lifting Brother James Williamson right now. Will you help me lift him this morning? That God would have his way. We're lifting Deacon and Deaconess Percy Jackson this morning. They lost Deacon Jackson's son, Sherman, just a few days ago. Maybe, maybe it was just yesterday. The young man was not even 55 years old. God, God help those many persons tied to Sherman. The offense around his wife, those children, his father, and all of those. Please don't forget to pray much for Sister the family of Sister Minnie Baker, whom we laid to rest on yesterday. We know that prayer works. And just as it is their time right now, we need to be praying. Because one of these old days, it'll be you and I in need of prayer. Come on, Deacon. Give us, lift this prayer to us. Glory to God. Glory to God in the name of Jesus Christ. Gonna ask Reverend Hines to come down and pray with us for us this morning. Glory to God. Let us pray this morning. Our Father in heaven. It's another day's journey, and we're so glad about it. We thank you, God, that we can take all of our concerns, all of our issues. Thank you, thank you that we can bring them to you in prayer. Thank you, God, that prayer can go where we cannot go. Prayer can do 
what we cannot do. Father, we come to you this morning. First action that you look inside of our hearts, look inside of our minds, look inside of our spirits. God, knowing that we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity, knowing that though we try to live perfect, God, there's something on the inside of us that's not right with you. We ask this morning, we don't try to hide it, we don't try to run away from it, but God, we confess right now. Cleanse us from our sin. Give us eyes to see like you, a mind to think like you, hands to help like you, a tongue to speak life like you. Father, we ask, Lord, that you create in us a clean heart. Renew the right spirit within us. God, don't cast us away from your presence, but God, in times like these, God, we need you to draw us oh so near. Father, now that we've confessed our sins and we believe by faith that you have forgiven us, God, now we approach your throne with thanksgiving. We thank you this, this morning, God, early this morning. God, you touched us with another finger of love, mercy, and grace. We thank you, God, that all last night, that while we were unconscious unto this world, thank you that you had those angels to, to hover over our rooftops, God, to watch over the bedroom, to watch over the living room, to, to watch over, God, the doors of our house. Thank you, God, that no murderer, no thief, God, broke in our house and stole what we had, and God, even stole in our lives. We thank you, God, that, Lord, when we woke up this morning, God, we were able to look around the house and everybody was doing fine. We thank you that when we opened the refrigerator, there was still something in the refrigerator to eat. We thank you this morning that when we looked in the closet, we still had some suits and the women had some dresses to put on. And God, thank you that we didn't stay at home to watch CNN or NBC or Fox News. But God, thank you that we had a mind that because you woke us up this morning and, and the day is the day that we celebrate you. God, thank you that we had a mind to come out to the house of worship. Father, we thank you this morning, God, for watching over us all last week. God, somebody had, had, a, had a hard week, God. Somebody, God, had to struggle and strain. But God, thank you that you kept us going on. Father, we thank you, God, for being so good, so kind, so merciful and gracious, God. Thank you, Lord, that you even answer our prayers, oh God. Even the prayers, God, that you haven't even answered yet. God, we say thank you. But Father, in spite of how good we feel. We got some brothers and some sisters that are going through. But God, your word said that we that are strong should bear the infirmities of the weak. So God, we come God who are strong in you. We come lifting up our brother and our sister, God, that may be down this morning. We come to you this morning lifting up our brother, Reverend Marcus Stewart, to you. God, we know that you are a healer. We know that there is nothing impossible for you. So God, based on your reputation, based on the history that we got with you, that you are a doctor in a sick room, based on our reputation with you, that you got all medicine in the hem of your garment. Go to Reverend Stewart right now. Touch his body, Father. Father, keep his mind in perfect peace, oh God. Be with his family this morning. Father, we pray this morning, Father, Lord, that if we can pray, God, as the church prayed for Peter, God, I believe that you're able to get him up, God. Father, we pray this morning for the Jackson family. We pray this morning for the Williamson family. We pray for Sister LeVette White this morning. We pray, God, this morning, Lord, that you touch in a mighty way. Father, we pray this morning those that, that God are dealing with loss, those that are dealing with sickness. Father, we pray this morning, God, do a mighty move around South Liberty. And then, Father, we pray for the church. We pray for South Liberty Missionary Baptist Church. We pray that South Liberty will be a light on the hill. We pray that even South Liberty will be a light to those that may be down in the valley trying to find their way home. We pray this morning that you speak through your manservant. Give Pastor Barlow everything that he needs, oh God. God, to equip us, God, that we can leave this church not just informed, but be transformed, that we may transform the world. We pray this morning for the community around South Liberty. We 
pray for the city of Canton. We pray for the county of Madison. We pray for the state of Mississippi. And God, we show not pray for these yet United States of America. We pray, God, for every governor, every mayor. We pray for the president. But God, we realize the power is not in them. The power is in you. So help us to get on one accord with your word. Father, I pray now. Even be with those men, women, boys, and girls that still fighting on the battlefield. Father, be with those men, women, boys, and girls that's locked up in prison this morning. And Father, I pray for that brother and that sister that can't even pray for themselves. We lift them up to you this morning. And Father, we ask, Father, touch them in a mighty way. I pray for those who have been praying. And God, you have not yet answered their prayer. I pray right now. Give them patience. Father, I pray right now that they don't grow weary in well-doing. But I pray that they will hold on just a little while longer because that change is on the way. And Father, we just want to give you praise this morning for bringing Brother John Flemings back to us. We thank you, God, that you just is our sight, God, and he's here in South Liberty with us this morning. And Father, we're just waiting. We're waiting, God, for those that may be down to enter back into this church. And God, we pray that when we leave here on today, help us not to just leave better people, but help us to leave better Christians. And help us to go back to our homes, our, our communities, our jobs. And tell a dying world that Jesus is still the answer for this world today. We take every prayer request. We take every family and we put it in your hand. And we wait on the manifestation that you are about to bring. It's in the name of your son and our suffering savior, Jesus the Christ. We pray and we show enough, say thank you. In Jesus name, amen, amen. And amen. Right there where you are. Come on, lift your voice. You know the song. Come on, get you some help this morning. The song says, Come by here. Come by here, my Lord. Come by here. Come by here, my Lord. Come by here. Y'all wanted to come this morning? Come by here, my Lord. Oh Lord, oh Lord, somebody's praying, Lord, somebody praying, Lord, somebody's praying, Lord. Somebody's praying. Lord, we need you. Oh, Lord. You can make it personal right here, Mary. You can make it personal right here. I heard somebody say, I really need you. I really need you, my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name good morning God has done it again I went to sleep the other night and it was April woke up that next morning it was May God didn't ask me nothing about it he did it all by himself so I just thank you Lord for letting me see May the 2nd 2021 
We will ask that you remember, continue to keep the Baker family in your prayers. Our own sister, Minnie Louise Baker, was funeralized yesterday at 10 o'clock at the Burke Cemetery. And we ask that you keep Sister Lavette White in your prayers. Lavette's father, Mr. Henry Jackson, passed on last week. She will be leaving here Wednesday, going to Chicago for visitation Thursday, May the 6th, at the Gatlin 10133 South Halstead in Chicago, Illinois. And the funeral is Friday, May the 7th. So we ask that you continue to keep the White family in prayers and ask for traveling grace as she go to bury her father, Mr. Henry Jackson. And as Pastor Ford stated, the uh, Jackson and the Nunn family. Also, students, graduates, Dr. Lee is asking that they're trying to finalize everything this week. So uh, please, 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 let me read what I got. Please uh, have all your information in by May the 6th, May the 5th, which is Wednesday. They're trying to finalize the graduation plans, and she will get in touch with you individually to, show, to tell you what you need to present. And they will, um, and if you have a graduate that you would like to feature, the information is due on Wednesday, May the 5th, 2021. And uh, Dr. Lee's email address is mlgrant3 at, hotmail, at hotmail.com. Also, we would like to say a happy belated birthday to Anaya Willis. He celebrated her 10th birthday. And to Michaela Carr, celebra celebrated her 7th birthday. And upcoming birthday is Deaconess Marshall Simmons. We'd like to say a happy early birthday to her. And to all of you that's having a birthday, happy birthday to you.
in your hand, you have all that God has placed in this earth that's needed for us to make it. If we would just apply these words as a nation, there would be no crime rate. There would be no hurt, no victimization. That would be no trouble. Folk wouldn't fall out with each other if we just followed these words. There would be peace in the land. But everybody ain't going to always do what's right. But the truth of the matter is that if you do, your very best to follow these words, even though there's not peace in the land, there could be peace in your soul. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. I just want to read into your hearing verse number 13. Look look, look what the text, text says, Janice. He said, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. This this, this is what I like right here. And having done all to stand. Pray for me. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for another opportunity to stand and proclaim the gospel. Father, I thank you for your goodness and mercy toward us. I ask God right now that you would move me out of the way. Let your Holy Spirit do our teaching and preaching. He is our teacher. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I submit, yield to you, my mind, my mouth, and my ministry. Magnify yourself in this place. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. God is my all and all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, choir. Thank you. Soloists, thank you. Brothers and sisters, thank you, brother deacons, for your service this morning. So good to see uh, chairman in the house this morning. Come on, somebody help me give God praise. Amen. So good to see him back in. So good to see all you. Thank you. Thank you, nurses. Thank you, nurses. Will y'all help me? Um, bless the Lord. i tell you why. Uh, on this past Thursday, just on, pa- on Thursday, uh, it was our nurses who uh, came out and worked tires- tirelessly uh, while we hosted uh, the coronavirus vaccines right here at our church. Amen. Uh, and that went off very successfully on Thursday. And so we are excited and thankful for all our nursing ministry is doing under the leadership of nursing president, Sister Barbara Frazier. So God is just blessing. God's blessing South Liberty real good. I don't know if y'all knew that. This morning I'd like to talk to you from this thought, if you allow me, after you've done all you can. After you have done all you can. 
Brothers and sisters, the story is told of an elderly gentleman who had missed attending church for three Sundays in a row. The pastor of the church, being overly concerned about the man, paid an unexpected visit to his home. Inside the rundown house, he found the elderly gentleman sitting in his chair in front of a blazing fireplace by which he was sitting to warm himself during this cold Michigan winter morning. Since an empty chair was there by the old man, the pastor sat down and both of the men just looked at each other. Not one man said a word for 30 minutes. After sitting in silence for another few seconds, the pastor gets up took some tongs out of the fire, off the fireplace and went, went into the uh, fireplace and pulled out one of those logs and laid it on the floor just outside the fireplace. The men then sat back down and looked at each other. While they both waited in silence, they, they noticed that that one hot log that had been removed from the others was beginning to lose its flame. Within 10 minutes, Marquita, the log had completely burned out. Within 10 more minutes, the log had returned to its original state. Within the final 10 minutes, that log had gone cold enough to now be able to touch it with your bare hands. Having been in the old man's house now, just over an hour, the pastor rolls up from his chair and grabbed hold of that cold, displaced log with his hand, and he put it back into the fireplace with the other blazing fire logs, and they both sit there and watched it gain its strength again become consumed with a great fire. As the pastor then headed toward the door to leave the home, the old man said, Pastor, thank you for such a fiery sermon. I'll be in church next Sunday. Saints of God, though this story may be fictitious, its spiritual meaning is the story exposes, let me tell you what it exposes, it exposes the tricks of the devil in great detail. Let me unpack it for you because much like that law, Kelly, that, that, that unoccupied space away from the others that kept it burning so, the devil wants you and I to be away from everybody else, from our sources of power so that our fire also dies out. This is what Jesus was alluding to in John chapter 10, verse number 12, Reverend Hines, when Jesus said, watch this, the high, the, he that is a hireling and not the shepherd whose own sheep are not, see if the wolf cometh and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catches them and scattereth. That Jesus paints for us this imagery about the enemy and his tasks and tactics. The enemy of our souls, this devil, like a ravenous wolf, has as his aim the goal of luring you and me away from our sources of power because he knows that the isolated Christian, much like a once hot and fiery log, is both vulnerable and victimizable. Too many Nowadays, beloved, after having been away from their places of worship and the people with whom they have once worshipped are finding themselves vulnerable due to the vicissitudes of life that have come with the coronavirus and the cares of this age. The devil is ecstatic about this, particularly as it relates to the plight of the church because he has used it along with his lies to steal, kill, and to destroy the fire that was in the heart of many peoples. 
That enemy has caused an overwhelming lack of confidence in the power sources of our groups and our gatherings and our God. Friends, be mindful. Come here close now. I need to talk to you. Be mindful that social media offers good church, but not great church. Because the truth is that, that, that Hebrews 10, 25 says, we must not forsake the coming together into this place. The devil is telling all kinds of folk, this is convenient, I like this, I, 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 so on and so forth. But, but, but God said that we forsake not. Secluded worship provides good growth. But seeing one another offers greater growth. Because if I'm right about it, Brother Fleming, Proverbs 27, 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so one should sharpen another. You and I, beloved, are called into Christian community because we help each other make it through. Saying your prayers to God in your house is good, but all oh, saying your prayers in his house is even better. Because the truth of the matter is, according to Jesus in Matthew 21 and 13, I heard him say that my house shall be called the oh, come on, somebody in here. The house of prayer. For just over a year now. Host and hundreds of once hot and fiery souls with a spiritual fire shut up in their bones have now sat idle so long that they've grown cold and callous and content with the status quo. Today, Charlene, our aim is to welcome everyone who is able to begin re-entering this place. If you're able to, to, to come on back, we, we want you to come back. Come Get on back here with, 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 on the, where the fire is hot. But more than a welcoming to Barbara, today I, I, I wish to use our time together to warn, I want to warn somebody that the cares of this world Coronavirus included can cripple Christian faith by causing us to consider what we should do when we really don't know what to do. In other words, the, the, the cares of this world will, will lead us to a place where we have a problem that seemingly is bigger than our problem solved. But for being in community, being engaged, being consistent in your worship, you find yourself becoming cold and losing confidence in the God who we just sang is our all in all. For the time that is ours today, let's talk through this text. For this text offers us a plethora of paths to take when we're pressed down on every side. The writer of this text, Deacon Nicholson, is none other than the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul certainly understood when, when, when being in situations that, that, that you've done all you could do. The Apostle Paul, you may remember here, he was a powerful preacher. He went across, praise our God, the, the nation at the time, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and, and calling men and women to come to Jesus regardless of what they had done. He went and did it, and, and because he had done it, he he stayed in trouble with those that did not agree with his message. Paul now finds himself at the time of this writing in prison. He's done nothing wrong. All he's done was preach the gospel and they got they place him in prison in Rome where he's serving a two year sentence for preaching the gospel. Paul here in prison. Not only is he in prison but he is guarded 
by two Roman soldiers. Every, in fact, they, they want to make sure that Paul doesn't get away with Anita. And so they change shifts. And every eight hours, a, a fresh set of two guards come in and watch the Apostle Paul. The only job they had was to sit there and watch the man to make sure that he did not get out. Why was this a problem? Why? Well, because this wasn't Paul's first time in prison and they knew Paul's reputation. They knew that the last time Paul got in prison, uh, all he did was sing and give God some praise uh, and the Lord opened the doors of the prison. Uh, and so that maybe I'm trying to tell about seven of y'all uh, is that yes, yeah, sometimes you will be in situation where you really just don't know what to do here's some good news do what you did last time because the same God that showed up last time is the one that you got to depend on to show up this time don't lose your confidence don't, don't, don't you lose your righteous spirit don't you lose your faith you keep trusting and believing even though it looks like you at a point you really don't know what to do a point where you done done all y'all ain't never been there come on talk to me now talk to me if you can have you really been at a place in your life when you have done all According to Paul, as it relates to the things and people for which we care most about in this world, there will become a time that you and I will have. Somebody here today has a sick loved one. And for that loved one, you've taken them back and forward to the doctor. You, you, you've tried to ensure that they had their medicine, their, their medication. You, you didn't even make them go pick the medication up. You actually went to the store, to the pharmacy, picked up the medication. You didn't even ask them to pay for it. You paid for the medication. You bought them the medication. Some of y'all done bought even the little old pill kits with the Monday through Friday days on there, and you just put all the pills in there so that all they got to do is pop open the bottle and, they put, and pop in the pill. You, but you, you have done all. Somebody here today has a spouse and you trying to save your marriage. You, you, you done gone to the counseling sessions. You done read all the books. You done watched why all the marriage movies. You done done all you can do. Somebody here, if I'm right about it, has a child, a wayward child. You done done everything. You done, you done fed them. You done clothed them. You done tried to give them everything, whatever it was that they asked for. You tried to give it to them, and it seemed like they just don't want to do right, and you getting tired because you recognize you've done all. You can do it. Somebody here's got a financial problem. You done done all you can do. Somebody here got a friendship that you just can't fix, and you done done everything. You can do. Somebody here got a family problem that, that, that you done done everything. You, you done apologize, and, and, and you ain't even the one that did wrong. Y'all ain't never been there. Come on, talk to me if you can. Have you really have, have you really done had some situation where just to keep peace, you know you ain't did nothing wrong, and you the ones that, I'm sorry. If I offended you, I'm sorry. Okay? I want to fit, but 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 that person does not want to make a meal because one want to don't want to fix that, and you done done all. Perhaps even some fiasco that you may be in, which you've done everything you can do. Perhaps you're in a struggle and you've done everything you can do. Well, here's the good news. I need to tell you what you can do. Paul told me to tell you this. He said, after you've done, done all, you need to stand. 
after, after you've done everything you can do, you need to just stand. It is messing me up, though, as I read the text, because it seems like, Brother Fields, if you tell me to stand, you're telling me to stop. You're telling me to not go any further. You, you, you're telling me that, that I, I need to just take my hands off and leave it alone, so on and so forth. Well, then here's the question I got evident. Why do you keep writing, Paul, after you done told me to stop? For, for Paul writes 11 more verses after he told me, John, that I need to stand because I done done all I can do. Wait a minute now, Paul. Why would you keep writing after you told me to stop? After you recognize that I done done everything I can do? Why would you keep writing? I hear Paul saying this. Paul, Paul, Paul says, we say, if you read the text clearly, now the next 11 verses have very little to do with you. They have everything to do with God. Somebody almost got it right there in the back of it. Let me say it right here. When you've done all you can, uh, you better recognize uh -huh, that there is somebody that can pick up where you left off. Y'all missing me right here. Praise our God. Stand means recognize uh, that even though you're powerful or uh, powerless, there's one that is powerful. Stand means recognize that even though you are limited, there is one that is limitless. Be it may recognize that though you are at your end, there's one that's just getting started. So the work of which Paul writes in the next 11 verses is what God does, not what you do. He calls because he's already told you and I that after we've done all we can do, what we need to do, come here somebody, is staying. If you may be at a place in your life that you need this, anybody need this this morning? Please let me go and give it to you. Try and get out your way. I, need, I, I, need to, I just need to use the acronym S-T-A-N-D. I want to use every letter of the word to, to give you something quickly here. Some nuggets in the text that, that's deep if you really listen. You ought to write them down if you can. Listen to show, I need to show somebody in here what you ought to do after you done done all you can. Here's the first thing. Here's the first thing that this imprisoned Paul is trying to get us to recognize. Listen, here's the first one. When you've done all you can do, the first thing, the first thing you ought to do next is Stop whining, why? Uh huh. Touch, my, touch somebody close. Say, stop whining. Stop whining. See, see, see. That's what. That's what. That's that's when the devil gets us where he where he has us where he wants us. He has us where he wants us when we are whining, whining, whining. Anybody got a child young enough to remember the whining? Praise the name of our God. Don't that whining just get on your nerves? Oh Lord, I can't stand. I, yeah, I got a three-year-old baby. Lord, a child to death. But Lord, that whining. Hello, somebody. Sometime I don't even want to go. I find something to do outside. So. I I don't have to go in and talk about whining because I want some milk, whining because you want deer. Now, wait a minute. Now, I'm the, I'm the baby daddy. I love the child, but I don't even want to go in there because I don't want to hear no whining. Can I tell some of, some of y'all this? Sometimes God say, look, until you finish that mess, I ain't even going to get involved. I ain't even coming in the house. I ain't riding there. I ain't showing up at the job. I ain't even getting in the car with you. you going to have to cut that whining out. Too many of us, when we get into some trouble, we get into it at our wits end. We get, praise our God, we go back to our childlike, immature ways and go to whining. And that's exactly what the devil wants you. He wants you saying, it ain't fair. You can, did God say not to eat that tree? The devil wants you at a place where you talking about, why me? Too many of us get there and we start, we start whining. Why this happening to me? Why, why are they doing this? All I do at this job, why, why is this happening to me? All I do, I, uh, much as I, how well as I don't love my husband, why is this happening to me? Paul, 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 Paul said, stop whining. Why does he say stop whining? He, he's telling us to stop whining because, because 
we got to understand as believers that the reason the wolf comes is because he wants us to be weak. The reason the troubles come is so that the devil can do his best to get us weak. The reason that somebody upset you at church is so you won't come back to church no more. The reason, the reason, the reason that something always pops up as you try to get closer to God is because the devil does not want you to get closer to God. You, we get in situations and circumstances, and those situations and circumstances are designed by Satan. It was, I, 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 they are designed by Satan to take our minds off of Jesus and get them on the prop or on ourselves. And so we start saying, why me, why me, why me? Why not you? Why not you? Why not you? That's really what we are going to have to get to the, we got to grow up in God and get to the point that we say, why not me? Praise our God. What makes me so good that I can't deal with a little sickness every now and then? What makes me so good that I can't deal with a little trouble in the, in the home every now and then? What makes me so good? Neither one of us are perfect. Neither one of us, praise our God. We all have to go through something every now and then. And it's not, praise our God, the people that we see that are giving us the biggest problem uh, according to the Bible look right here in the text he said put on verse 11 he said put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the did y'all see it in your Bible he said you need to stand against the wiles of the devil well the, that word wiles generate mean methods you need to stand I need to stand, we need to be able to stand against the methods of the devil. What are the methods of the devil? Well, we know quite a bit about the devil already. We, we know that he uses lies to get us all messed up, right? Not only that, but we, we know that his aim is to steal, kill, and destroy. We know all that right there. But but the methods, the wiles, the, 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 the way the devil tries to get us weakened and away from God is by using, watch this, three things. Personal sins, personal suffering, and personal setbacks. Personal suffering. Mama sick. Devil. God ain't going to do nothing. Personal suffering. Child sick. Personal suffering. Marriage trouble, perhaps even divorce. P personal, personal struggle, but then, but then there, 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 there's a personal setback. Loss of job. Loss of loved one. Lost something. I, I, I lost something. The devil uses those methods. He, he uses those methods. We, we, we've got to stand, however, knowing that everything is going to be all right. Last night, praise the name of our God, I sit down, praise our God. I was down in Hattiesburg, and, and, and my son was, was passing through, uh, and I said, boy, come on down here. Let's have dinner. And we sit down. We had dinner. had a good, good time. We sit there, and, and he sit there, and I looked at my watch, and we had done sit there about five, about four hours. And I said, boy, look, I got somewhere to go. Now, why, why you ain't gone yet? You I said, well, what, what doesn't happen? He said, I got fired. I said, no. How you sitting up in here looking cool and calm and collected and, de and then done offered to pay for the food and you done lost your whole job out here in these streets? He said, because I got a new one already and I'm going to work Monday morning. Is there anybody knows that when you have some personal setbacks, it ain't the time for you to give up on God. It's the time for you to dig in and really believe that everything is going to be all right. I ain't gonna whine. I ain't gonna cry about it. I ain't gonna, no, y'all ain't helping me up in here. Is there anybody has something this year that you threw whining about and crying over and mad about? You just gonna learn how to stand? Fine Friday. Going to orientation Monday. Ain't God all right. The devil uses personal, personal suffering, personal setbacks, and he uses our personal sin. All of us got some. Don't look at your neighbor right now. The devil uses our sins to tell us, watch this, that we are too bad for God to have anything to do with. 
Brothers and sisters, these are the methods that the enemy uses. But what Paul is trying to convey to every last one of us is that we need to stop whining. We need to stop getting mad at Sheila. We need to stop getting mad at Brad. We need to stop getting mad at the folk because it ain't the folk that got the power to do the thing. That it, they just being pawns that's being used in the situation. You got to understand, beloved, that we, look, we need to look past the people. Somebody shout, I need to look past people. Stop letting people get on your nerves. Stop letting people do this, that, and the other because it ain't the people or persons. Let me tell you who it is. You better read the text like I'm reading it. The reason you need to stop whining uh, is because the Bible already told you who it was that's trying to pull you down and make you weak and keep you away from God. Verse 12, he said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power and spiritual wickedness in high place. It's the devil. It's Satan. And Satan wants to keep you weak. He wants you isolated. He wants you to be by yourself. Satan loves for you to be alone and think that it's, hey, poor, poor me. Don't nobody care about me. Ain't nobody called me in a week. Ain't nobody texted me. Stop whining! Here, here let me move. You got to deal with the devil. Jesus dealt with the devil. Devil is going to bring some personal sins uh, our way. Devil is going to bring some per personal suffering our way. Devil is going to bring some personal setbacks our way. But that's not for us to fall, to, to get, fall down. We need to stand. Let me give you the second thing here. The second thing, when you've done all you can, the second thing you ought to do is this. You ought to take God at his word. You ought to take God at his word. Look what the writer began to tell us here. In verse 13, Paul uses the word, he says, take. Wherefore, take. Again, in verse number 16, he said, you need to take. And in verse number 17, again, he says, you need to take. What, what, what Paul is saying, take, take, take. Now, now, now the idea then, uh, if I'm asking you to take something, uh, it's, it's, it's because, watch this, it's already been provided. I can't give you nothing that I don't have. Paul is saying, I want you to take it. It's here. You, it's available to you. When you reach a point, praise our God, that you done done all you can, you need to just take something. You ain't got to create it. You ain't got to make it yourself. You ain't got to borrow it. You ain't got to buy, you, you, you put it, uh, get a loan for it. He said all you got to do is take it. Well, what is it that Paul is trying to tell us that we need to take when we're at the end, when we're with as far as we can go and we've done all we can? He's saying you need to take the word of God. You need to take the word uh, and take God at his word. Believe what God has said about what he's going going to do in the situation. Look what he says here. How, how did I get to, to that? In verse 14, Paul says, you need to have your loins girded about with truth. Uh, what he's talking about there is the word of God. The word of God is the only true source that we actually have. CNN ain't the truth. Fox News ain't the truth. Uh, Ebony Magazine ain't the truth. Ain't none of that the truth. The only truth is the word of God. You got to take the word. You got to take the word. Then Paul says, you got to put on the breastplate of righteousness. This. The word, not only is it true, but Paul is telling us here that the word is right. The word is right. The right way to live is in the word. The right way to think is in the word. The right things for us to do are in the word of God. Paul is again telling us about the word. He's saying take the shield of faith. The word of God is what gives us our faith. He said, one writer said in Romans chapter 10, how can they hear without the preacher? And how can he preach unless he be sent? But then he goes further and says this. He says that now faith cometh. Come on, somebody up in the house. By, come on, somebody real, somebody Baptist in here. He said now faith cometh by and hearing cometh by the. He's telling us here that it's the word of God that's going, that we need to take when we are in a situation where we've done all that we can. Not only that, he said, take the helmet of salvation, then the sword of the spirit, and even tells us what the sword of the spirit is. He says it too is the word of God. Between, Valerie, between verses 13 and 17, what Paul has said is that we need, when we're in a situation where we done done all we can, the way to stand, 
sin is to take God at, at his word. Is anybody trusting the word of God in your situation? Are you trusting the God that we serve in your circumstance? Are you trusting God with your issue right now? What has the word said? Well, you've been in church long enough to have some word that you ought to be able to take with you everywhere that you go. You know what I take with me every single place that I go? I take the word and keep it on my heart that I have not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the hearts of man the good things that God has that for those that walk up right before him. What that allows me to understand is no matter how dark it gets, no matter how low the valley, no matter how bad things look, I got a word that I take with me all the time that it, oh God, the God that I serve is able to turn it around in a heartbeat. You got to take God at his word. Take God at his word. But here, there's another thing I told you. Not only, brothers and sisters, you got to stop whining. Not only do we stand by taking God at his word, but here's another thing that I need to tell you. When you've done all you can, you need to ask God to do his will. Come in here close because y'all look kind of, kind of strange at me right there. Notice that I said we need to ask God, Melissa, to do his will. Paul says right there in, in, in verse number 18, he says, pray always. But, and I know you're praying in the midst of your situation. I know you're praying. I know you're praying when you done done all you can. I know you're praying. But most time, we ain't praying the right prayer. Most of the time, we praying what we want God to do. Y'all ain't helping me here. Most time we praying, and we, we almost, if you ain't careful, some of us even tell God how we want it. Lord, I'm ready to get married. I want him to be six feet. I want him to be tall, chocolate, dark man, bald head with a goatee and an earring, if it's all right. God, 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 God I want a, a 2021 Cadillac SE, and I want four doors. I want the one with the red leather seat. See, see many, too, too often time, we go to tell it, categorize it, everything we go. We, we want, what, what, but baby, what, what the Lord wants you and I to do is to learn how to pray according to the Spirit, and praying according to the Spirit is to pray in line with what God God wants for our life. It's the reason that Jesus said, uh, Father, I really don't really want to die. I really don't want to go to this cross. Really, did I, that now that I'm looking at it and I see the cross and I see the nails and I see all them soldiers coming to get me, I really don't want to go through this kind of deal. But look what Jesus says after that. He said, nevertheless, thy will be done. You all touch yourself and say, sometimes God wants me to go through We always want it to be our will, but, but, but we need to pray that God's will be done. And God's will look totally different than our will. His ways are above our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. Let me tell you about God's will. Vicar, back in 2005, I had this great job. And then all of a sudden, I didn't have this. They bought in this white fella and put him in the job that I was in. But the white fella didn't know a whole lot about the specific job. And, and so they asked me to train the man. And so I started praying according to Antoine's will. I said, Lord, let that joker fail flat on his face because I ain't going to teach him nothing. Can I just be real with somebody around here? Three whole months went by. I didn't, I didn't deal with it. I didn't tell him nothing. The next set of three months, I went back to the Lord because I was getting a little bit more spiritually mature. I said, Lord, if you ain't going to move him out the way, fix it and get me out of here. Because I'm fit to do something real bad. Three more months, Lord kept me right there at that same time. Once around, we, we got around the eight month period. I prayed a different prayer. I said, Lord, I really don't want to keep going through this. I don't like this situation. 
but thy will be done. Do what you want to do. Bless me to be a blessing to the man. God opened the door, allowed me to be a blessing to the man. And I worked for that fellow that entire year. Now, it was not my will that I go through that situation. It was an awful situation. He was a racist person. It was terrible for a whole lot of reasons. But watch this. Watch this. Praise the name of our God. After that year, after that year of being in that situation, everything I found, I had nothing but success over the next 10 years of my life. And every, when I look back on it, I, it was because I was able to do things that the only time I learned them was when I was working for that man in 2005 when I was working for that man in 2005 baby sometime God will call us to go through and we just got to go through we got to ask for his will not our will his will not our will when you've done all you can brothers and sisters watch this here's here's some destiny tell you never stop watching and worshiping never stop watching and worshiping look what Paul says in verse 18 he says, pray always with prayer and supplication in the spirit and watch thereunto with all perseverance. Watch with all perseverance. Man, what am I watching for? When I'm, I, I've done all I can, what I'm waiting for and watching for is for God to do all the stuff that he's getting ready to do. That's what I'm looking for. After you done prayed about it, you might well start looking for the blessing. After I done prayed about a thing, Jamaica, I go ahead and start praising God for it. After I done delivered it and, and talked with the master about it, I already know that it's getting ready to happen. Why? Because I've lifted it to the Lord and I've asked that his will be done and not my will. And so his will is always going to be done. Watch what happens here. Not only do I need to watch, but I need to persevere or I need to worship. My worship does not need to stop. We need to continue. Continue, even though we're at the point where we don't know what to do, we need to stand by giving God our worship, giving God our praise, continue serving the Lord. Watch this. Can I tell you, show you how this breaks down? I remember back in 2 Chronicles chapter 10, verse number 11, Janice, the Ammonites and the Moabites, they came and they said they were getting ready to surround Jerusalem and take all of the people in the city into captivity. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse number 12 and 13, the king at the time named Jehoshaphat, he went and prayed that the Lord would do something according to his will. In 2 Chronicles 20, chapter 15, then while Jehoshaphat was praying, the prophet by the name of Jehaziel got a word from the Lord. He went in to Jehoshaphat. He said, Jehoshaphat, the Lord just told me that your prayers have been answered and this battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. Wait a minute, it gets even better because in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 16, the Lord spoke, spoke to them and guess what, he, guess what he said? He said, stand firm. I said, stand firm. And the Lord been having folks stand a long time. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 17, King Jehoshaphat started worshiping, Kelly. He started worshiping. In 2 Chronicles 20, chapter number 18, when they saw that King Jehoshaphat was worshiping, all the people started worshiping too. Praise the name of our God. Well, you know what happened in 2, Ch in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse number 21, when they finally got there to where the people were, they realized that the Moabites and the Ammonites sometime in the middle of the night had turned on each other and started killing each other and so when the people got there and looked around the enemy that they thought was getting ready to destroy them had all killed each other y'all ain't watching the text what here I'm trying to tell at least six of y'all this jacket in ten verses they went from a problem to a, a progress brothers and sisters don't worry about what's going on you just keep doing what you've been doing you continue to stand watch and worship the Lord our God when you've done all you can. When you've done all you can, here's the last thing I need to tell you. When you've done all you can, don't worry while God is working. Don't worry while God is working. If you've been a good note taker this morning, you got some things that's gonna help you stand. I told you S, you gotta stop whining, why me? I told you T, you gotta take God at his word. I told you A, you gotta ask God to do his will. I told you, Ian, you got to never stop watching and worshiping. Final thing I need to tell you is this. Don't worry God while he's working. Don't, 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 don't be worrying while God is 
working. Don't be, don't be worried. I never forget. I don't know if y'all, uh, if, if I'm really uh, in, in good on good ground when I when I tell you this. But when I was a little boy, praise our God, I remember when it would start raining, praise our God, and it would start thundering and lightning, praise the name of our God. And, and grandmother would have all the children. Uh, can I say children around here? She said, she, she said, y'all children, come here. She said, get them televisions off and and get them radios off. Uh, y'all know what I'm talking about around here. And granny said, get all that jump up there. And she said, sit down over there. Y'all say, yeah. and, I, and I would say, Mama, wait a minute. Why, why we got to sit down and why we got to do all this? She said, because whenever the Lord is working, you got to just sit down sometime. I wish I had help around here somewhere. Anybody need to know, baby, when God is working, you don't have to be worrying about anything. I come to serve notice at least seven of y'all right now that God is working on your situation. God is worship working on your loved one uh, God is working in your family uh, God is working in your marriage uh, God is working in your body you ain't got to do nothing but just stop worrying about it and let God go ahead and do what God is going to do you heard the woman of God doing the announcement saying uh, she said that she went to bed it was one month uh, and she woke up it was a whole nother month uh, and she said God uh, didn't ask her if he could do it. Uh, he just did what he was going to do. Uh, you ought to shout to your God in here. Uh, Lord, do what you're going to do. Uh, you ought to shout every now and then. Uh, Lord, if you're moving, uh, if you're moving in this season, uh, just don't do it without me. Uh, ain't God all right uh, as I move to get out of here uh, I need to tell you what Paul said uh, for Paul says uh, in verse 18 uh, he said pray always uh, with prayer and supplication uh, he said watch and persevere uh, but then he says and supplication uh, for the saints uh, wait a minute now Paul uh, you messing me up here now uh, because in verse 13 uh, you told me that I done done everything that I could do uh, and then you begin telling me what God was going to do uh, and you told me how to stand uh, but now you get down here in verse 18 uh, and you telling me in verse 18 uh, that when I'm praying uh, I need to be praying for everybody else uh, now wait a minute Vanita this messed me up now uh, Paul I got a problem uh, why you want me praying for everybody else uh, Paul I'm in the middle of something uh, why do I need to be praying for everybody else uh, Paul, I got a sick love one. Huh? Why do I need to be praying for somebody else's love one? Huh? Paul, I believe I'm seeing you clearly here, though. Huh? The reason Paul says, huh, by the time you get to verse 18, huh, when you really know you can stand, huh, is that you're worried. When you're able to pray huh, for somebody else, huh, that means you ain't even worried about huh, the thing that you already done placed in God's hands. Huh? Is there anybody here huh, done placed it in God's hands? Huh? I done placed it in God's hands. God's got it right now. Glory to God here. Let me get out of your way here. But before I go, I need to tell somebody that after you've done all you can, you ought to just stand. After you've done all you can, you ought to stand. Reminds me of a story. There's a story, Sister Edna, of a nine-year-old boy. And a nine-year-old boy lived with his grandmama. He lived with his grandmama. And his grandmama said, boy, I got to go to the grocery store down the street. And I want you to stay here by yourself. Everything will be fine. She said, but don't get in no trouble. Ain't God all right. She went to the grocery store. And the boy went down in the basement. Y'all know how little bad boys is, don't you? Uh, went down in the basement uh, and the boy uh, saw some matches on the counter uh, grabbed the matches uh, struck the matches uh, he saw a candle in the drawer uh, lit the candle uh, and got the plan uh, and knocked the candle over uh, ain't God all right uh, and the boy uh, when he knocked the candle over uh, it started a fire uh, in the basement 
the boy saw that very quickly fire began to consume the basement he was in and the boy knew he had to get out of there and so he went over and he found some books but they wasn't big enough he went and found a few more books and they wasn't big enough he went and found a few more books wasn't big enough he still could still couldn't reach the window out of the basement he went to the drawer and found a Bible one of them old Bibles one of them big old Bibles he put it on top of all the other books stood on the Bible he rested up pulled himself out of the window got himself to safety ain't God alright the fire truck showed up praise the name of our God the house was burning down the fireman say little boy where did you come from he say I was in the basement and I got out this morning I got out just fine he said boy you a little old short boy how did you get out of that situation the boy said I just stood on the word of God ain't God alright after you've done all you can you ought to stand after you've done everything you ought to stand on God's word I'm standing on Genesis and Exodus Leviticus numbers Deuteronomy Joshua judges Ruth first second king first second Samuel Ezra Nehemiah Esther Job Psalm Proverbs Ecclesiastic Isaiah Jeremiah Lamentation Son of Seeker Joel Amos Obadiah Jonah Micah Nahum Habakkuk Hagar Zephaniah Mal Zechariah Malachi Are you standing on the word? Matthew Mark Luke and John Acts Romans 1st and 2nd Corinthians Galatians Ephesians Philippians Colossians 1st and 2nd Thessalonians 1st and 2nd Timothy Titus Philemon Hebrew James 1st 2nd Peter 1st 2nd 3rd John Jude and Revelation matter of fact sister Peter one of them books tell me what to stand on when I can't go no further I can stand on the fact that Friday one day Friday he went to a rugged cross on top of God got those heel. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head. For me, he died. He died. But that's not how the story ends. I wish I had a witness. Three days later, it wasn't Friday. It wasn't Saturday. But all Sunday morning, he got up with all power all power the kind of power to help me stand when I done done everything I can do I can stand after you've done all you can somebody's at that point right now somebody's at that point right now you done everything you can. Done everything you can. Everything. Ain't nothing else you can do. You can't fix it. You can't medicate it. You can't turn it around. You just gotta, you gotta stand. Just stand.
Corinthians chapter number 11. These words are recorded. It said, but let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 28 through 33 simply remind us that we ought to ask God's forgiveness wash us, to cleanse us, that we may be ready to partake of his table. It, it admonishes us that if we've got anything against anybody, we ought to make it right so that we can be at peace. I challenge you today, if there's somebody in this room that you've not made it right with, somebody in your family, don't let this day in, don't let the sun go down, and you not make it right. On the night he was betrayed, after he had given thanks, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, broken for you. Take it. After the same manner, he took the cup. He said, this cup is my blood in the New Testament. Take, drink. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the rest will he set in order upon his return. Brothers and sisters, we depart from this place, but never the presence of our God. Reminded that there are going to be some times in our lives that we will get to that point where we've done all we can do. But at those times, what we ought to do is stand. 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 Our ushers will lead you out. God bless your hearts. Thank you for coming this morning. We look forward to seeing you on Mother's Day next Sunday. God bless you. God keep you. There are baskets in the rear of our sanctuary for any gift of love that you may have for the Lord. Hmm. Sit after you done all you can. After you've done all you can After you've done all you can You just, you just stand